Ooh, Lance Mechanics here. Welcome to the garage, welcome to the channel. Today, I wanna to talk about EVs in Ontario and how I think they're gonna destroy the electrical grid. So, a few things first. I am not against EVs, I love them. I am a gearhead. The performance, the reliability, the simplicity of them is amazing. I'm actually thinking about rebuilding Tesla batteries in good time, but there's some issues here. At least in Ontario, it could be different in your parts of the world, but, they just don't work here. And let me explain. So let me give you some facts about Ontario here. What, where our electricity comes from? 55% of it is nuclear. For people who don't know and you're, oh my God, I thought it was all hydroelectric. A good portion of our energy does come from hydroelectric dams. That's 24%. The other 8% comes from wind and 4% becomes comes from sol solar. solar. Uh, what people don't know is there's no real good way to store energy. So as your demands go up, you have to produce more electricity to meet that peak output. And it blows my mind when people think that all this energy generated from wind, hydroelectric, solar, nuclear, it just stays up in the clouds somewhere until we need it. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> it really doesn't. So believe it or not, the way a majority of Ontario stores its energy is by pumping it uphill. Sounds wild, right? But if you pump water uphill into a storage area and when then you need that energy, you open a flood hole and it comes down a pipe to a, where it hits a turbine and it regenerates energy. Is it practical? No, it's probably one of the best ways we have to store energy that's cheap and efficient because the other way to store energy is with batteries. And what do you, need to make batteries lithium all those fun elements uh, hard on the environment it's just impossible to store that amount of electricity and when i tell people this they're kind of shocked they're like it doesn't make sense we're in this we're in the 21st century well that's the way things are and the more i explain it to people the more amused they are really so let's get into it so here's a little fact people don't know 91 percent of the energy made in uh, ontario is considered carbon neutral or carbon free Nuclear really isn't at the end of the day because uh, future generations are gonna pay for that. It's a complicated subject. So I'm gonna spew out some facts here. Ontario has the worst hydroelectric grid for a developed country, I swear. I talked to a lot of industrial electricians. I talked to a lot of uh, linemen. Our infrastructure is just junk. It will not survive having a million electric vehicles by 2030. So let's get into some facts here. So anybody who's curious, a Tesla wall charger, the expensive one, uses 11.5 kilowatts. And that, that's the high end, and it can draw up to 48 amps. So imagine, let's just say all Tesla, I'm not picking on Tesla, let's just say there's a million Teslas plugged in overnight in Ontario. That's a lot of wattage, that's a lot of amps, and that's a lot of heat being generated, and we'll get into that. But it's not like that really. It might be divided different parts of the week because not everybody drives the same days, but let's say a lot of people will plug them in Friday night because they want to go somewhere on the weekend. Friday is the biggest draw of energy, especially in the evening. So to give you a perspective here, Tesla Powerwall, 11.5 kilowatts. <laughs> a window shaker, what we call an AC air conditioner, will draw at max 3,000 to 4,000 watts. So three to four kilowatts and maybe 20 amps on the high end. This is going like really high end uh, AC window shakers. So every Tesla is gonna be three times an air conditioner, at least, very least. So now you have these Teslas, which are like three air conditioners on the grid. Then you got people in the summertime running their air conditioner. I'm saying summertime, because this is when the majority of things happen. If you're curious, people who live down south don't know what it's like up north. There's days of the year where all the mines shut down because there's not enough electricity in Ontario. The grid is just so overwhelmed in the summer that they literally shut the mines down, the same mines mining the nickel to produce these electric vehicles. A little wild. So that right there tells you right now, Ontario currently cannot meet the demand, but all the electricians I keep telling, talking to, they're saying the substations can't handle it, the power plants can't handle it, the infrastructure can't handle it. Ontario is a logistical nightmare when it comes to mountains, rivers, lakes, everything in between, that it's nearly impossible, in my opinion, that the Ontario government can keep up with the electrical infrastructure. 
So with their goal of having 1 million vehicles by 2030 is just so unrealistic. And currently as it sits in 2025, there's 201,000 electric vehicles in Ontario. So in five years, they wanna double it by five. <laughs> That's a lot. That is a lot on the infrastructure. Another thing to think about is what blows my mind is how many of you, and be honest in the comments, believe that when you take AC and convert it to DC, it's one to one. I got some news for you. You cannot convert forms of electricity without loss. So they say it's anywhere from five to 10%, but you have to search because it goes down the rabbit hole. You can have a 20% loss converting AC into DC current. And for people who don't know, alternating current is what we all use for everything. So alter alternating current goes up and down, up and down like a sine wave. And because it does that, they're able to transfer it hundreds and hundreds of miles without losing uh, any potency. DC, you can't go far, cannot go far at all, it draws too much amps. So when you're converting AC to DC, you're cutting off the sine wave to create DC. And what happens is you generate heat and doing that generating heat, you have a loss. So people saying electric cars are efficient is kind of a myth. It really is because people don't understand how it's made. So whatever you gather from this video, I'm not anti-electric vehicles. I just don't think long-term they'll work in Ontario. And I, uh, I work with a lot of Swedish people and they like my city because it's very similar to Sweden when it comes to weather. And they've been telling me stories of, uh, they get snowstorms out there and it's very hard to get to people on the freeway because they're trapped. There's people freezing in electric vehicles. Uh, whereas a, a ice engine, internal combustion engine, you can run for days and days and days and not run out of fuel if you have a full tank, but in electric vehicles, it's like nine, 10 hours, and then it shuts off. So you're gonna have to go into your <laughs> the person in front of you's car to stay warm. Something to think about. But like I said, I'm not totally against electric vehicles. I think they're simplistic. I think they are the future. I just think diesel electric would have been the better uh, solution than going through uh, all these hybrids or fully electric. There's, there's options out there but the government forcing us to one option doesn't make sense at all. So post in the comments what you think. I hope there's enough information here that you guys can be like, oh, that's interesting. But again, remember, there's a loss when you're converting energy. People don't talk about it. Converting AC to DC, you're gonna lose. Whether it be five or 20%, no one can give a, the right answer. Everything generates heat. So uh, Lance Mechanics, some food for thought. Have a good one.